Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So tonight, we're going to continue our discussion that we started last week, where we're talking about stillness in the Taiji form. And I actually just published a, a blog today. So if you want to go to the website, you can check that out and, uh, uh, and also put a, a YouTube video up there as well to kind of address this area. Because I think it's really important. Uh, it's something that we tend to get focused on the doing, the movement, the uh, what's happening next. And we forget that it all movement comes out of the stillness. And to, to and that is where the chi is mobilized. So the um, we want to mobilize first and then move. And the chi reaches its maximum potentiality in those moments of stillness. But the stillness can happen even though there's just apparent motion. So uh, the example that I like to use is that of a pendulum. The pendulum swings back and forth, like say on a grandfather clock. We'll take a pendulum that's just moving back and forth rather than one that's moving in, you know, in 360. And so there is a, as the pendulum reaches its, its full uh, extension, it starts to decelerate as it goes there. And as it approaches that, that end of it, it gets slower and slower and it covers smaller and smaller distances until it reaches that end point where it turns around. And during the, and at that end point, its velocity is zero. And the time it takes to change velocity is also zero. So the, uh, the apparency is that there's this continuous movement, but in actuality, there is a point where it's going the other direction. And in that moment, which lasts zero time, there is a turnaround. And in that turnaround, there is, it reaches its maximum energy potential. That's what fuels the, the movement back in the other direction. So in that point, there is maximum energy, maximum potentiality, zero manifestation in terms of motion. And the same thing is happening in our Taiji form when we go from yin to yang. So every movement has points where it's extending or expanding, points where it's contracting or moving in. And the uh, if it continues to go in one direction, then it's no longer Taiji Tran, it's something else. So uh, we want to be able to be cognizant of all these moments of, of yin and yang, of being able, be able to see those, those points where there is a change. So the first step is to just become aware of what is, what's your yin part and what's your yang part. And this is further complicated by the fact that just about every move has both. And so, you know, the, if um, uh, you are doing a movement, let's say a, um, a rollback, there's a point where you are, you are retreating, you're taking in and then you're turning. So there, there's a yin there, which is there, you're sinking in and then there's a turn where there's, that's the yang extension of that, of that uh, particular posture. But within that, even in the yin part, that is I'm spiraling down, they, ah, I'm reaching with my hands. So there, the hands are in a yang position. So there's yin and yang and yin and yang within each yin and yang. And it's turtles all the way down. So you want to, uh, you get to look at that and you pick a spot. And what determines it, just like in the pendulum, what determines the the uh, the motion for you is the perspective from which you're looking. If you're looking at from the side, so it's going like this, right? And you're you're seeing that, and you're able to see that it looks as continuous motion. 
if you are looking from the end, if it's coming toward you, then it's just coming closer and moving farther away. So the perspective has a lot of it, lots to do with it. And that changes dramatically whenever you are part of the pendulum. Whenever you are actually participating in that pendulum motion. And the example someone brought up last week was on a swing set. You swing, you reach that peak point and it turns around and goes back the other direction. But in that peak point, it, particularly if you're like, you know, really pushing it, you're getting it out there, there's a, a sense of weightlessness, sense of uncertainty as you get to that, get to that end point there. And even though the turnaround is zero time, there is a um, there is a feeling that's attached to it. There's a you have a sense of it's this is taking some time. You get a body sense in that, even though your conscious mind can't um, um, can't keep keep track of that. Are we still on? Yes. Okay. Good. Sorry. Um, so even though your conscious mind can't get to that zero point because it it's zero it uh you can feel into it you can resonate with that emptiness that comes with that so in um, one of the ways that i find it useful to keep track of the yin and yang is use your breath and some people say oh on the expansion like master chen william chen he said on the expansion that's an inhale Okay, and that works for me, and that's that's fine. Other people like say uh, Yang Duing Ming, you know, oh no, it's the uh, on the extension that's an exhale, and it both work depending on what you're going for, and in, in either one. But the advantage that I see, regardless of whether you inhale or exhale on the Yang move, it by doing that by pegging your your movements to your breath, you're able to keep track of which is which so that you actually become very much, you coordinate your breath with your with the yin and yang. So it's uh, very different from other people who do Tai Chi and they just say, oh no, the breathing, you coordinate the movements to the, to the to the regular intake of breath, but this is this is different. This is where you're actually consciously controlling your breath, regulating your breath, in keeping with the movements. So it's a it's a it's a different perspective on that. But I find it useful to do that because it enables you to to be able to keep track of the yin and yang, and then you're also able to find those still points where yin becomes yang. So if my arm is going out, that's a yang motion. And if it's coming back, that's a yin motion. There's a point where that turns around. And that point is a moment of stillness that may, in your ordinary motion, last zero time, that turn around. But since we're doing Tai Chi really, really slow, and we can take that and make it even slower, we can then say, oh, I go here at yang, 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 and I feel into the full extension of my yang. And I say, okay, that's as far as I wanna go with that, with that ward off posture there. Now what? I'm going to go yin. So I can hold in the still point. And in doing that, I'm tapping into and really getting comfortable with that maximum energy potential that is in that still point. Because the motions are expressions of, the, of that energy. But the, it is in the stillness that we get it together. So when, we talk, when I talk about mobilization, you know, I, I mentioned that Chen and Ching says, Mobilize first, then move. That it's not like you have to go. You can, by focusing on that, you can reduce the amount of time it takes for you to mobilize. 
down to almost nothing so that you're able to then if you familiarize yourself by doing it really slow and hanging out there for a while then you can get to a point where you can do it very fast say in an application say you're pushing hands you can do it that way or if you're you know sparring or if you actually have to use it on somebody then you can access that mobilization very very fast and that's where you see these really cool tricks that Taiji masters do. That's a, how, how did that happen? You know, it's because during those moments of relative stillness, they're able to mobilize their chi to such a degree that they're able to express it very fast. And so, my, so we get mesmerized by the motion there, but we are not seeing the internal work that's that's occurring so in our in, in our practice we want to emphasize the stillnesses as well as the movements there's an adage that uh yang Dring ming mentions in one of his books he said that you know it's it's from uh, from an uh, uh, an old uh oral teaching that that movement born of movement gets weaker every day. Movement born of stillness gets stronger every day. And so it's, it's a shorthand way of, of, of saying what I just said rather lengthily, but the, uh, it, we have to be able to get to those points where we're able to identify those still points and use that to, to move in. So in those still points, we empty out. So if I, let's say I'm in a, I say I'm in a, uh, a press posture here and I'm like this and there's, I'm in the most young part of that. I have to get rid of that for me to go forward. That's, that's as far as it can go. I cannot, I cannot now go on to my next movement and still hold that posture. I have to destroy that posture. I have to throw it away and move to emptiness, move to nothing, move to no manifestation, to the space between thoughts and just, ah, now what? Oh, I'm going to go into a, going into uh, the next posture. But that's true every step of the way and within each movement, every step of the way. So what it does is it, oh my God, more homework. No, no, this is, <laughs> this is an opportunity to take the simplest posture and turn it into a whole practice session or a whole practice. Just you're able to, to then, oh, take anything you want. And by slowing it down and turning that into a meditation, you can feel into the vast potentiality that exists within your body, mind, spirit connection every moment. And then the fun begins. Uh, let's uh, discuss before we go forward. So any thoughts, questions? Valerie. Um, so if, if I'm understanding you right, like, you know, taking any particular form within your set, um, like going into ward off, like halfway through or a quarter of the way through, just you can stop but and the next thing would still be to expand but you still can be in those moments of stillness all along the way correct is that what you are saying you don't have to turn around right well i'm saying that, that there's a moment of stillness that's born into every transition from yin okay. to yang okay i, I so so, I'm, I'm saying is focus on those so you can do it, that other thing that you're talking about there as well. You can you can stop any point along the way, and that's great too. And and that's actually advanced. That's uh, where you're able to find the still point in every motion. But because there is a, a yin and yang within every with every yin and yang. But the here what I'm talking about is specifically the transition from a yang to a yin or a yin to a yang. So let's say if I'm going from from rollback, I go back to here. 
and I feel into that stillness before I go into the next the next part. And the thing that I uh, use because the the arms are going to be doing their thing. So the arms, even when you're in the yin part of the move, they can be in a yang position. So what I use as my marker for whether something is yin or yang is, am I releasing the qua or am I turning the waist? That's, that's it. If I'm turning the waist, then that's a yang expression. If it's, if I'm releasing the qua, then it's a yin. So in, in, in this case, let's say if I'm, you know, let's say I'm going into, uh, um, from, from my, my uh, roll back here. I've gone, I've gone like this and I'm here like this. So this is the yang expression of a yin move. The Lu energy is a down and in, so it's an actually a, a, a yin energy. But the movement itself, this part of it is the yang expression of it. That is, the energy is reaching its peak. My peak of my, my Lu energy is right here. So what am I going to do? I have to dissolve this form. So I feel the ball of my left foot, set my left knee spiral down to the left. And even though my arms are right raising, coming up, which is a young thing, the qua is releasing. I feel my ball of my right foot. I set my right knee spiral down to the left. So here I am, oh, I'm, I'm releasing into that. That's also yin. But then I turn my waist and come into a press here at this point. And that's the yang aspect of that, of that posture. But each point along the way that, ah, so if I'm here, there's a point, a still point, and then ah, I go into this. There's a still point, and here. How long does that still point last? maybe zero. So even though let's say I'm doing it like this, I'm going into my, my rollback and here, even though it looks like continuous motion, just like the pendulum, there are moments of stillness there where I gather the energy, where I mobilize the chi and that enables me to mm, express the energy in a in a, in a very real and powerful way. Lynn. So given that example that you just gave us, yes. how would the breath part work? Ah, okay. So this, and again, this is my approach, which is a synthesis of all the things that I've studied. I've you know, read all kinds of people. Master Chen, I use Master Chen's approach in this particular posture. So let's say I'm going to here, and as I go into my rollback, I'm inhaling and reaching out, expanding, feeling, feeling the. Do uh, you want to put me on full screen? Um, a feeling expanding and opening up. This is the, a yang expression. So I'm inhaling here, and then as I, uh, I exhale, as I release, spiral down arms come up and then I release down. I feel the ball of my right foot set my right knee spiral down to the left and I release again. So I'm still exhaling. I feel the stillness there. So as I turn, I'm going into a young and I'm going to inhale now. And then there's a moment of stillness and then I like that. But the, that stillness need not be perceptible. And in fact, it shouldn't be when you're actually doing it. It should be, it look like you're, you're just, uh, you're just moving constantly, but you, you and your conscious mind are noticing the still point, noticing the transition. And when I said before, like, you know, you practice it so that you get so familiar with that still point with the empty, with the quiet, that you can then speed it up and uh, it will uh, it will work much better. Andrew. 
Um, first of all, from my own research and practice, and uh, but it seems like also in the breath, there will be these uh, parallel still point. Yes, that absolutely. Would, it's very profound and yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So each breath has a turnaround. Each breath has, you know, there's a point uh, you're inhaling and there's a point where you start to exhale and back and forth. So in that and coordinating that, bringing awareness to all these things brings mindfulness to the present moment where you actually start to resonate with these things. There is, you're sufficiently mindful that you know what's going on, but there's also, you're part of it. You're participating in it. So then that's happening as well. So it's the only way this works is if you are in a super conscious state. If you are clumsily going along with your rational mind, you're probably not going to be able to keep up with all the uh, with all the moving parts. So that means that you really want to have your your super conscious state established right from the very start. That's why we, we begin with the three pillars. We get everything nice and set to begin with. So then whenever we go forward, we can mark when we lose it, when we get off, when the train, train jumps the tracks and we're no longer in that state of heightened coherence, that state of heightened awareness. And we say, oh, yes, I'm thinking way too much here. I probably should go back and recheck in with my three pillars. Richard. Um, I don't want to complicate this because I'm complicating it for myself a little bit, but it was so clear to me when you did the rollback that not only in the, that there's, that there's stillness in every transition from yin to yang. So as you were doing rollback, I realized it was very clear to me that there was a point at which there was stillness before the movement continued. Yes. Um, so I, you know, you can take that to its extreme, which is probably not a good idea right now. But what I've been thinking is that in the beginning, I was thinking that I was thinking to sort of stop myself and appreciate the stillness. What I realize is that you need to appreciate the stillness, but you don't need to stop. Right, but you can stop. You can, and yes. It's a really swell idea to do so, to stop and smell the, smell the, sil the stillness and uh, do that often and long so that you can get really comfortable not doing. Right. So the, the, you know, there's something that, you know, uh, in, in our Taiji class, we would play this with push hands and say, I would say, first feel, then do. And that's another way of saying that feeling state, you are pausing to establish the stillness before you do. The mastery comes whenever you can do that really, really fast so that it looks like, an, you know, an eye blink, eye blink, you know, that, that, that just happened like, whoa, how did, how'd that occur? You know, but that's where the, that's where it comes, that's where the practice comes in. But you don't get there by practicing it fast at first, you practice it by slowing it way down because that's where you introspect, you slow the tape down so slow that you can see frame by frame what's going on. And then you can click, click, click. And you can then, using your little editor, you can change the frames. You can, you can take pieces out, put pieces in. You can, you can make alterations whenever you slow it down that way. Valerie. Um, obvious, well, maybe it's not obvious um, because I'm a big fan of stopping and smelling the, the stillness you know, like slowing things down and just appreciating that moment. So obviously, if you hang there for a long enough time, you're gonna take some more breaths before you go into the next part, sure. correct? I mean, sure. it doesn't matter how many breaths you're taking. Absolutely, it's not, it's not a rigid thing. So it, think of the breathing in this case as just a 
a device, a mnemonic, if you will, to uh, remind you of the yin and the yang by pegging it to that. Um, there are other ways of thinking about breathing where you get into, is it Taoist breathing? Is it Buddhist breathing? Is it, uh, you know, where, which direction is the chi going and all kinds of stuff like that? Is, are you, uh, you know, are you bringing the chi into the bone marrow and circulating it there? All these are really cool things to do and should all be done. But we're just talking about this one thing today and that is pegging the breathing to the motion in whenever the motion is relatively continuous. Whenever, as you say, Valerie, whenever you slow it way down, then yeah, you gotta take a few breaths. That's okay. In fact, please do. And just like Andrew said, while you're there, notice the rise and fall of the breath. Notice whenever you're reaching, oh, it's time to take another breath now. I've exhaled long enough. And then you go and you, you do that. Andrew, you had something? Yeah, just yes just thinking about it i mean with breathing you don't have it there's no choice whether you're moving or not moving there, there is a turnover every breath what are you saying i'm saying that that it's um it's a great place to observe what you're talking about is in the breathing because every breath, every breath does this every breath has a as a turnover it does every, yeah so it, it absolutely does, but you have a choice yeah. of when that turnover is going to be. And this, yes, yeah, the only thing that we can control that's part of our our uh, biological being. You know, some people can stop their heart, I guess, some masters, but we have control over the any, breath. Any one of us can can increase or, or slow down the heart rate. That's that's not a that's not a big deal. It, it, I used to, you know, whenever I was a kid, that seemed to be the stuff of science fiction. But it's something that that anybody can do with you know with a few minutes of training can learn how to slow down or raise their their uh, their heart rate but uh, uh, the breath is uh, breath is something you can control um, you don't want to stop it but um, you know you can do all kinds of fun things with it I was uh, I saw a thing where Kate Winslet was doing a, a role and she learned for this role she had, a, a shot had to be shot underwater so she was uh, underwater not breathing for seven minutes and 14 seconds which seems like a long time to me but that's where she was consciously controlling her breath to that degree and uh, most of us don't have to have to go to that extreme but being able to control the breath is a really swell thing to do sandy you had something yeah we're kind of question so um do you, are you thinking of applications more or are you thinking of energy? Like I know from, from myself, like it helps me when I think of like a punch or connect, you know, connecting to an arm or something. Um, now my put, you know, push, I tend to think of like pushing an energy ball. So I'm not consistent with the way I do the form, but I was just curious, like, what are you, are you trying to connect to an arm or are you thinking of more energy um, with, you know, for each posture, basically. Well, that's, that's, that's a really good question. I think it's, it's uh, apropos of this, um, it's something that comes up a lot because there are two basic ways that you can approach, particularly say breathing in this case. And one is they call it the scholar's route, which is where you are slowing down you're getting very introspective and you quiet the breath, it becomes very, long and slow and deep and quiet. Whereas if you're thinking application, it goes the other direction and it gets shorter and, and uh, more compressed and more explosive. That's where you get into the traditional hen and ha motion, oh, ha, you know, kind of a thing where you get in uh, for application. So in terms of movement, um, I, uh, it's perfectly, perfectly good to, when you're punching, you know, thinking of punching, you know, punching someone or something, but I find it more personally find it more satisfying to pick a spot in space and reach out. So to find that spot, 
Because what I found, particularly with students, is that if they're thinking about punching someone, they tend to go back into a primitive kind of response there, which is they're pushing that fist out rather than just reaching out. So Master Chen would always talk about, oh, here's your coffee, here's your tea. That's that's a, so he, you know, you'd reach out and to a specified point, and if someone happened to be there, then uh, that's uh, contact would be made. But you you know you would you know I remember uh, when I first started learning to box with him, I asked him if I should get a punching bag, uh, a heavy bag to to work on. He says, no, no, practice on a lampshade. So that you would you would practice your punch, so you'd learn to reach out, touch the lampshade without knocking the lamp over. And that was, that was the way of learning to regulate your body, regulate your chi, regulate your breath in a way that, oh, you're able to do that. So I wasn't thinking about punching the lampshade. I was just thinking about reaching out and touching it. And so I, I personally, when I make a motion, I'm not thinking I'm bouncing someone away with my ward off. I'm just finding a shape. Master Chen used to call that memory shapes. He said, oh, you, you go in your shape. And that's where you reach out and do that. But along the way, you can find the, the point. You can stop at any point along the way, freeze frame, and still have maximum energy in that posture. So unlike most other martial arts, momentum has very little to do with Taiji effectiveness, with Jin. It has to do with internal energy and being able to express it in a way which is highly uh, efficient. And momentum is, you can look at it as momentum because a punch going out will have a momentum, but if you're looking to produce momentum, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get there, Andrew. I just want to say a couple of times you've extended and stopped, and I've wanted to go flying backwards. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you may be developing some zoom powers. <laughs> zoom power. <laughs> but don't be surprised if you suddenly see me fly backwards when Rick does that. <laughs> but that's the that's the idea. If we find feel into the stillness, then we can regulate how far we want to extend with that energy. So it's a point where, let's say in each man, where you're just, you're occupying a shape and feeling into the infinite potentiality of that shape so that you can explode in any direction because you've gotten so comfortable with that shape, so comfortable with the stillness in that shape. Anybody else? This is all great stuff. Thank you. So uh, I want to go back to a gallery. Let me see if anybody else raising their hand there. Da, da, da. Anybody else? Uh, all good. Okay. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's do something. How about we do a uh, very simple qigong exercise? We'll use a form that we've used for other energies, but now we're we're into the wood. We're into the liver. So liver is where it starts, okay? We're going from water, which is very, very yin, into liver, which is going from yin to yang, okay? And this is where it starts. So the, the energy of, of uh, the emotion of liver is anger. And this is tempered by the joy of the heart, okay? The heart is joy, and it is, uh, uh, the fire energy is joy, and the anger, so you get a joyful anger. So you get this, there's an intensity that comes with liver chi, with wood. So there's a, you know, mm. so in the, uh, for liver chi, for wood chi, it's in the fingernails and in the tendons and the ligaments in your connective tissue system. So what you want to think about is maybe like you've got some, some dragon claws there or some kind of claws and you're extending those and you're, you're grabbing with your fingernails. 
with your claws. So when you're making these motions, the, the hand is kind of rounded and, and you're reaching, you're really extending, okay, as we do this. So we're gonna do a very simple Qigong, uh, keeping it simple so it's not like you're memorizing a new movement, but you're finding this idea of breath and stillness in the motion. And we're gonna hang in the stillness for a little bit so you can really feel into that and, uh, and allow the chi to really uh, to, to build up, to mobilize. Okay, so here we go. All right, so begin with your feet and step out. Good. So you want to get your three pillars. That is, you want to feel the balls of your feet and allow your weight to settle over that. Bring your knees over the balls of the feet. Allow that to settle in. So you're feeling kind of like you're on the edge of a diving board. You're going to dive off. You feel the crown of your head and reach up with the crown of your head. Tuck in the chin and open up the gap between your uh, your occiput and your neck, your jade pillow gate. You're opening that, tuck in the chin. Relax your lower back and allow your tailbone to drop, your Wei Lu. Allow that to drop. When you do that, check again, make sure you didn't sink back into your heels when you, uh, whenever you dropped it. Reach with your fingers, your index fingers. Reach with your elbows. So don't let your arms collapse. You wanna bring out the elbows slightly. Opening the shoulders. So you're not lifting the arms, you're just reaching out and creating space in the shoulder joints. So just hang there for a second and just feel into that. And notice how quickly you move into the gap between thoughts as your body-mind shifts into a body-mind-spirit integration and you go into a superconscious state. Okay, so we're gonna be doing some wood chi. So wood chi is expansive. As you're feeling those fingernails, Feeling the, the sinews, the tendons and ligaments. Feel into your hands and notice the chi that's already building up there. As we begin in stillness. Take your right hand and circle to the right. Circle back. The hand under the dantian, under the under the navel. Feel that. Feel the stillness there. Now bring your hand up, palm in, bring it up your center line. And this is a yang extension. So here I'd like you to breathe in as you reach up, inhale through the nose. When you get up here, you're gonna rotate the forearm so the palm faces up and reaches up. You're really extending, opening reaching with the elbow, reaching with the wrist, reaching with the fingers. And we've reached the end point of our yang extension. And I just want you to feel into the stillness there. Now take your left hand and circle that out. And bring it under your navel, the dantian, reaching up with the right hand, pressing up, feeling the left hand 
and feel those two poles in opposition. And feel into that still point. We're creating, we're generating, we're, we're creating energy here. We're tapping into the big chi, but we're also creating localized energy between our hands as we feel that stillness, those poles in opposition, generating, mobilizing the chi. So now the left hand comes up the center line, the right hand comes down. Rotate the left forearm so the palm reaches up. Right hand, palm down, sink. Bend your knees, sink a little bit as you reach up and reach down. And pause and feel the stillness there. So notice we had uh, the left hand was going up there, which is yang. The right hand was going down, which is yin. Turn, circle your right hand, turn back. So actually turn out here and just feel that. So we're, before we turn back, here's another still point, okay? We reach the extension of, of how far we're gonna reach out with that right hand, we reach another still point. So feel into that, feel the, we got a, a rotational energy here that is also creating some cool stuff. But we're also reaching up with that left hand. So we these poles in opposition create something unique. And then turn back and come to here back to the center, reaching up, reaching down, poles in opposition. Breathe, feel in, feel into the stillness, feel the energy. Mobilizing. Inhale as your right hand comes up, left hand comes down. Rotate, right hand reaches up, left hand reaches down. Feel the stillness. Left hand circles out. Feel the stillness at that turnaround point. Feel the opposition between the two hands. All these things are happening simultaneously. In a super conscious state, you can keep track of them, even if your conscious mind can't. You're also feeling into the balls of your feet. You're feeling the turn of your body. You're reaching with your elbows, reaching with the crown of your head. All these things are happening simultaneously. And in a super conscious state, you can regulate those without getting stuck in thinky thinky mode. And then turn back to center. Left hand comes up, right hand comes down. Feel into the stillness. Feel the extension. Feel the wood chi, the expansive yang chi that's animating your connective tissue system right now. Feel that whole body integration, the jung teaching, the whole body energetic connection. Bring your left hand down. And stand in stillness. Feel into that. Feel the energy mobilizing. Feel it circulating throughout the whole system. Feel the internal pressure. So this is 
how we get used to having a whole bucket of chi. Because this can be uncomfortable if you're not, uh, if you don't practice it. Be able to learn to tolerate this much energy running through the system to be able to function with this much energy. And that's the purpose of Kung Fu. It's just practice and get used to it so that we can utilize it. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, sink into your right claw, and step in. Take a deep breath. And press down and disappear the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness, into the stillness. Great, right, grab a seat. Thank you. How'd that feel? Richard, yep. my uh, I felt like my <laughs> my thumbs and forefingers were about to explode. <laughs> I, I, I get that. <laughs> There's a lot of a whole lot of energy in that system. Scott. So at the end, when you said fill into the stillness, my reply was stillness my ass because <laughs> everything was moving. <laughs> There's no stillness in there. <laughs> motion and stillness, stillness and motion. <laughs> One begets the other. Yeah. So it's like a, like a gyroscope, right? They, the faster it spins, the more it's able to occupy a still point and and really hover there, you know, and that and it's able to stabilize an airplane by because it's spinning around and around. So that the the stillness and motion feed each other. Cool. Anybody else? How'd that go for you, Sydney? You're on mute. I was wondering how I was going to be able to do it. I did just fine. I really got into it. It was great. Beautiful. Great. Good. Yeah. What I did there was I showed you in a very simple exercise how to apply these principles because this is this is fundamental stuff. So it's rather than like say learning some riffs on a guitar, you're learning how to make a riff, how to how to play a guitar, you know, how to, you know, what makes, what sounds good. So this is kind of what we're doing here and, and, you know, continue that analogy, just like in music, there is, it's not just the notes that you can play, it's the spaces between the notes that mm -hmm. makes music. It's time. So you're able, your ability to, to then get to a point and just allow a, a vibration to continue, right, creates dramatic tension 
and a musical piece. So the same thing here, if I pause here and that bam, you know, it's uh, you're able to, it's pulling the bow string back, stillness, boom, motion. So you get that, uh, get that, that explosiveness that comes from, uh, from being able to quickly go from stillness to motion. Cool. Anybody else? Yeah. Scott or Stan? Yeah, just a comment. It seems like, uh, am I on? You are. Okay. It Ooh. seems like not only up here uh, that it feels pro cool and really going to town, but also the calves are going like crazy too. Yeah. So uh, I guess it's working. Uh, there's there's something going on there. Yes. Yes, definitely. Thank you. You bet. So in uh, in any motion, any any movement, any any form that we we're playing with, we can take all these different elements. We're taken out of the category of what should I do next into what do I want to do next? It's ah, giving, yes. giving you the tools to, to say, oh, I've got these elementary shapes here, these body shapes, these movements, which are like, a, like a, the elementary words of a vocabulary. That's what you know, these different shapes are. And we learn what they mean by by practicing them we we become familiar with this vocabulary what we do with those shapes is how are, how are we going to tell our story with these shapes how are we going to tell our story with with these movements so we can get caught up in memorizing somebody else's story which would be a particular form or something like that which is fine and very good and and highly laudable, but then, then what? At what point do you take control of your Kung Fu and start saying, what else is possible? What can I do with this? You know, then you can take any piece of the puzzle and you can break it down. Let's just say, let's say a very simple opening, you know, where, you know, where I'm, uh, Let's say I've stepped out. I'm just going to bring my arms up like this, right? So I'm in this emptiness. You know, three, two, and two. from here, I want to go into a, a young motion that is bringing my arms up and reaching out. How am I going to get there? I have to go from emptiness and I have to dissolve this emptiness by first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to release my qua on both sides so that I'm sinking down. So what am I doing? In order to go into yang, I first go to yin. I empty out, mobilize. And then, ah, here I come. Expansion. I know that there are certain ways of holding my arms that are more powerful, harmonious, better in a lot of different ways. And so I, I practice those. But what animates them is that mobilized chi. Now I'm reaching out, and this is a very young position. This is as young as I want to go in this in this shape. So now what I do, I get yin. I feel the balls of my feet, set my knees, release the claw, reach down to my elbows, down to my wrists.
and I reached the end of my yin movement. This ain't going no more yin than this. So now I'm going to go back to yang. What am I going to do? I'm going to feel the balls of my feet, set my knees, and straighten up a little bit, reach down with my fingers, open my joints, reach with the crown of my head, and fill up with chi. I've reached another still point. Here I am. Ah, so what direction do I go now? It depends on which form I'm doing. But this is a great place to start. I've got a full tank of gas. I can go in, in whatever direction I want to go. So now I get to play. I get to say, okay, this is good. But breaking it down like this, bringing mindfulness to the stillness, ah, then it doesn't matter what you're doing. If I'm reaching for my teacup and saying, oh, stillness. Ah. How much is the chi like a self-driving car? Um, how much is the chi like a self-driving car? I would say that you have a baseline of, of energy in the system that is occurring at a pre-conscious level, which keeps you alive, keeps your heart beating, your, your breath somewhat regulated, your digestive system working. That part is like a self-driving car. That's your pre-conscious patterns. So once you decide that you want to get off of the uh, preordained track that you're on and you're going to head off into the hills, then you put in four-wheel drive and you, you drive the car somewhere else. You, you have to make a decision then to, to what kind of chi do I need? Do I need wood chi? Do I need water chi? Do I need, you know, fire chi? So there's, then we get into all kinds of stuff or different, a whole different way of thinking of chi. That's like in the Chinese model. If I want to think in the polarity model, it's, you know, earth, water, fire, air, and ether, you know, and that's, that's a whole different way of thinking. So we have all kinds, we have infinite options at that point of how we want the energy to go. Because then we're, then it's regulated by your mind. It's regulated by either in Chinese terms, the Shin, which is your heart mind, which is the emotional mind, uh, or the E, which is the wisdom mind, which is what I, more along the lines, what I would call a super conscious state. So, so it depends on what you want to do. So we, we have a, a baseline of functionality and then we can take it from there. But we can even improve that baseline of functionality by doing stuff like what we just did. Cool. One more question before we sign off. Anybody else? All good, all good. Okay, great. Thank you all very much. Love you. Have a Thank good night. You. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Rick. Thanks, Okay.